Good morning. In this set of videos, I want to go through uh, and solve the six gas dynamic problems that you were given for homework. <clears throat> In the first one, uh, which is indicated as BAP that is on the screen here, uh, we have refrigerant R134A flowing at a certain speed uh, at the exit of a nozzle where the pressure and the temperature are given. We want to determine the Mach number of the flow state. And in this particular case, uh, we want to, we are going to use the phase change model because it is R134A. Uh, our gas dynamic model might not have that as a phase change. And so we are going to calculate this Mach number based on the technique that I showed you in class where we determine the acoustic velocity by doing a finite difference approximation on the acoustic speed equation. And so uh, <clears throat> in this particular case, we are told what the static temperature and pressure are. are and uh, uh, we also have the velocity. And so what we're going to do in this particular case is we're going to launch the phase change model, select R134A, which is a refrigerant. We haven't really covered it. It will be in our next chapter on refrigeration. But it behaves just like any other phase change type of fluid. And we're going to look at a 1% variation in temperature across the sound wave. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and launch the software, the test software. And again, <clears throat> we're going to go into a test app uh, that just represents the various flow states. And so in this particular case, I'm going to select, you know, this system system states again it's going to be a phase change model and i then whoops i then whoop, oh sorry about that ah. okay wait a minute I messed up messed up messed up messed up okay i've got to go back to i got rid of okay hold on a second about that little blip there I hit the wrong go away button so uh, I selected phase change model and now here we have our test app and so what we're going to do in this particular case is we're going to just look at two states uh, and the first state is going to be the state as given uh, which is 500 kPa and 3 and 30 Celsius for R134A. So we have to select the new fluid. And again, our pressure as given is 500 kPa and our temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. And so <clears throat> in this particular case, we have, uh, it, it then calculates the density uh, and the specific volume and the entropy and all the other values that we would need. Okay, so uh, in order to determine the speed of sound for this particular substance, and again, this pressure and temperature uh, is the static pressure and temperature, which is what the speed of the local speed of sound is a function of. And so I'm going to go to state two now. And the problem said to increase the temperature by 1%. And so I'm going to just put in that the temperature two uh, is 1% bigger, which is the same as multiplying it by, whoops, by 1.01. .01. Now, keep in mind that the various variables in test are always in absolute units even though the temperature appears to be in celsius here and so i'm going to check this i'm going to do a calculate here and i'm going to go to kelvin 
well, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, and I'm going to go to Celsius. And so no matter what, and so I'm going to go ahead and set this to Kelvin. And so with that, you see that I'm saying I want the temperature to be 1% higher, the Kelvin temperature 1% higher. Likewise, over here on state two, uh, this is the Kelvin temperature associated with the initial state. So it's 1% higher. It's about 3 degrees Kelvin higher. I'm sorry. It's about 3 degrees, or 303 degrees Kelvin. And so uh, this then corresponds to 1% higher. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to say <clears throat> that the entropy going to state 2 uh, is the same entropy as state 1 because our definition of the acoustic speed uh, is based on an isentropic pressure pulse that is going through the air. And so we, by specifying the isentropic condition, uh, we then have for this small increase in temperature, we have a different pressure. We also have a different density. And so uh, we see that all the thermodynamic properties have been calculated now. And so now we're ready to go uh, into the I.O. panel. Oops. And I'm going to do a, a super calculate. And I'm going to go down to my user code. And the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, print out uh, temperature 1. And we see temperature 1 is 303. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print out temperature 2. And we see it is 1% larger uh, in Kelvin. And so the definition of the speed of sound uh, is the, <clears throat> the partial of the pressure, the, the partial of the pressure of the pulse <clears throat> and how it changes with respect to density. And so I'm going to for and I'm going to form that derivative. Uh, we also know it's this, the speed of sound is the square root of that particular, uh, that particular uh, derivative. And so the derivative in question that we're looking at, and I'm going to go ahead and just say derivative is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and just say pressure, one, my, pressure 2 minus pressure 1 uh, divided by the... <clears throat> Uh, density one, which is row one or row two minus row one. And so that actually would be the partial of density with respect to, I'm sorry, the partial of pressure with respect to density. Now, because of a units issues, uh, we if we want to actually have it calculate uh, the 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 acoustic speed, we have to put in a factor of a thousand. And so by putting in a factor of a thousand, this derivative as shown right there is actually uh, has units of meters squared per second squared. And so this derivative is actually twi is actually the square of the speed of sound. And so uh, if I were to then uh, look at this value. You see what you see that it's given. What I now have to do is I have to, in order to get the acoustic speed, I'm going to call that a speed. It's actually equal to the square root, sqrt, of that derivative. And again, that derivative has units of meter squared per second squared. Uh, and that's why it's, it's in, and again, it's, it's twice the acoustic speed, and that's why it has such a, a high value here. And, uh, and so the square root is now the acoustic speed. And so what this says is in meters per second, the acoustic speed of this particular refrigerant at that particular static condition is 152. Now, we have a velocity in this problem that's 100 
meters per second. So the Mach number that we're looking to calculate then is simply the 100, the 100 divided by the acoustic speed, 1.52, well, I can use A speed. And so the Mach number for is the answer to this particular problem is 0.65. And again, that was using a finite difference approximation for the definition of the acoustic speed, which is the square root of the change in pressure with respect to the change in density uh, <clears throat> in an isentropic fashion. And so the answer to this problem is 65, 0.65. So uh, it is, the refrigerant is flowing, it's in the exit of a nozzle, and it's flowing, and in this particular case, we see that it's, it's subsonic at this particular condition.